Hello everyone, welcome to Discovering Knitting. I am Darlene. Um, it is six o'clock in the morning and I'm filming this video. <laughs> oh, and look at my cup. I got this cup from um, Hobby Lobby and it was like half off when they were having their Christmas sale, all half off and it's like let it snow. But it is a gargantuan mug and I have my coffee in it. So anyway, Welcome to Discovering Knitting. I'm Darlene. If you're new here, I normally talk about my yarn hauls first, my completed projects second, and then I discuss whatever I'm going to discuss. So, the yarn haul and what I'm going to discuss is kind of go going to go hand in hand. So, um, we'll do those last. Um, I'm going to show you what I'm working on now, my work in progress. As you all know, I ordered from Knit Picks some mohair yarn, and the mohair is 72% merino super kid and 28% silk. And this is how it looks. I'm trying to get you up close so you can see the fuzzies on it. I love the fuzzies on the sweater. And you can see the stitching. The stitching at the bottom is rib stitching, and the stitching at the top is um, stockinette stitch. And if you don't know what a rib stitch is, a rib stitch is knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, and you do it for two and three quarters inches on this sweater. And that's what that is. And stocking knit stitch, if you don't know what that is, that's just knit one row all the way down and purl one row, and you alternate. So, this is what I'm working on. And this yarn is so soft. It's so nice. It's so light. And I was nervous working with it because as you can see here, the pattern tells me to put two together. And that's what I've done. So literally I have two balls of yarn that I'm using simultaneously to knit. And let me just show you the pattern. It's from my book, Plus Size Knitting, that I got from thriftbooks.com. This was about $15. Um, this is one of the only books I've, I've, I think this is the only time I've spent this much for a book on thrift books. All my books have been $10 or less. This one was $15. And this is the mohair I'm making. It's a light, it's called an airy sweater, but this is the sweater that I'm making. So, working with the mohair, I was really, really nervous uh, because it is mohair and it's very thin. And so it, it's so thin you think you'll break it. Like, and, and I didn't wanna do a lot of tension on it. And so I did a couple of rows when I first started knitting the sweater and it was just so loose. If you go on my um, Instagram account, discovering knitting, discovering underscore knitting, you'll see what I was talking about where the first one I took a picture of it, it was really loose. So I started over and I tightened my tension as tight as I could get it. And it still came out fairly loose as you can see. Ooh, I'm sorry, but it still came out a, a looser knit. And I mean, I knitted it tight. I'm a tight knitter anyway, but, um, I knitted it as tight as I could get it, and you can see the edges. It's still a loose tension on it. And on videos, when I watched a few videos on how to work with mohair, because this is my first time, they said that um, you want a loose tension with mohair because it's supposed to be a light, airy fabric, but the tension that I had was super loose and it was looking kind of ragged. But as I kept knitting, I realized that it looked super loose, but it really wasn't loose. It was the right tension. Um, also, um, some videos I watched said that be very careful because mohair, you can't frog it back like you can other yarns because it's just so difficult to see. So make sure you're very good at counting your rows, sticking with the pattern, and 
not making a mistake. Take your time if this is your first time using mohair because you can't frog back the mistake of the mohair. You just have to live with it. So what I did, I'm so glad I purchased this a couple of weeks ago. I used my stitch counter um, because the pearl, the, the rib stitching was fine. That was easy to get through. It's just remembering, did you just knit a row or did you just purl a row? And I didn't want to make the mistake of purling two rows back to back when I should have purled one, knit one. So I used my counter, my knit stitches row one, my purl stitches row two, and this helps me keep track of that. And in addition to that, I also write down my rows with the stitch marker since mohair is a delicate yarn and you can't frog it back. I just want to make sure that I get it right. So that's my work in progress, and that's what I'm working on. I'm going to put where I got the yarn from in the description box below, and also the book. Um, I'll put the link of where I purchased the book from. Now, if you saw my video on my initial review of Knit Picks, you'll, saw, you'll see, you'll saw, <laughs> you'll saw, you'll see that um, I was happy with the yarn, but I was kind of disappointed that I didn't get all my yarn. Well, I posted it on my Instagram and Knit Picks reached out to me on Instagram. And I was just floored. They actually read the Instagrams when people tag them. However, I had already spoken to customer service and they'd assisted me with the two schemes. When I say Knit Picks has the most amazing customer service, I have SiriusXM, I have DirecTV, I have AT&T, I have Geico, and I speak to customer service. I like speaking to people. When I say Knit Picks has one of the best customer service, I had the best experience. The representative was jovial. She was happy. We were chit-chatting like, you know, we were catching up or something. She was really apologetic about the two schemes being lost. And um, they said they would ship it out to me right away. She was giving me an order number. And I had such a good experience. Before she even started processing to send me the two skeins, I ordered six skeins of the cranberry color in the mohair because it was just such a great experience. And I wanted to order more, but I was like, eh, I might not get all my yarn. But when I had such a great experience because they've forgotten to, I couldn't help it. I had to order more. So I ordered six skeins of the cranberry. So I'm going to make me a cranberry mohair and the mirth, which looks purple mohair from Knit Picks, but their customer service was stellar. Um, they reached out to me on Instagram. I didn't respond on Instagram because I had already spoken to the rep and then I posted pictures of the mohair and I tagged them in it and I posted pictures of how the customer service was great and I tagged them in it so they knew it got resolved. I told people to order it from them, but when I say I was excited, I was excited that their customer service was just as good as it was. It was amazing. So um, my review of the yarn, first of all, my review of the customer service is stellar, excellent. So even if they don't get your order right, like which I told you on the last video, sometimes they make mistakes. If they don't get your order right, they're going to make you feel good. And they're going to get your order right when you call back. And they're not going to be nasty about it. But working with this mohair, if you've never worked with mohair before, just know that it's delicate, delicate, what, what? delicate, it's six o'clock in the morning. Just know that it's delicate, I'm still saying delicate, like delegates. I've been watching, you know what, I've been watching the political news <laughs> and they were talking about delegates deciding the election if it's tied, sorry, delicate. So you're going to be nervous about working with it, but just try to make your tension as tight as possible without breaking the yarn because it does have good stretch. So you don't have to worry about making it loose because um, that's, like I said, that's what I did when I initially started. I was making it really, really loose and I tightened my tension on it and it, it worked perfectly. So you see, I've done the rib stitching and I've gotten the body of it, the stockinette stitch going. But working with this yarn is really easy. Um, I'm using my birch wood needles I got from Knitter's Pride, the color play, and it, it goes through the needle smooth. It holds, the needles hold the yarn well. It's easy to work with. Pearl is easy to do. The knits are easy to do. 
um, it's just a pretty, it's a good yarn to use. It's a good yarn to use. So, um, you know, you just have to be careful when knitting because of how thin the yarn is. So, um, you don't have to be too careful with it as far as breaking the, worrying about breaking the yarn, but you do have to be careful with not knitting two together. You have to be careful that you don't knit two together and you have to be careful that you don't split the yarn that you have. So um, those are the things I would say to be cautious of when using the mohair is to make sure that you take your, take your time. I move fast, I do, and I'm not gonna lie. So I had a lot of drop stitches when I first started knitting because I moved so fast. But with mohair, you can't move fast unless you're an advanced knitter. But since this channel is, I guess, for beginning knitters, kind of, we tend to move fast because we're excited. I know I do. I don't know about you guys. But you can't do this with the mohair unless you're really good at what you're doing. Because even with the color of the needle, you still have to make sure that you're knitting the right ones. And you can't split between the yarn. You see what I'm doing? So you just have to be careful with it. It's it's great to work with. You just have to take your time. It feels really good working with it. Um, and it goes pretty fast. Like this, I'm, I just started yesterday. Now I wasn't knitting all day yesterday. Um, I knitted while I was working. And I will put it down, knit one row, put it down, knit another row, put it down, knit another row. And I got pretty far. Um, so it's easy to work with. It feels like you're moving fast working with it. So I would suggest getting the yarn. I would suggest using Knit Picks because they're fantabulous. And I would suggest getting this book if you're plus size. And this goes from sizes 10 to 28. And I'm in the 18, 20 range, as you can see. But just so you could see the sizes that this book offers. So if you're anywhere from a size 10, and 10 is not plus size, honey. I don't know what the heck. But I'm, look, 10 to me is not plus size. 12 is not plus size to me. Four, when you start getting into 14, 16, you're getting heavy. That's just my personal opinion. But anyway, plus size for this book is considered 10 to 28. So if you're like a size 9 or smaller, you, if you know how to make the adjustments, you can. Um, I'm assuming, and I don't know if this is right or not, but I'm assuming if you're a size 10 and they tell you to cast on 80, if you're a size 4, you would cast on 40. I don't know. But anyway, it's up to you. You can try to make an adjustment to it, or you could just buy a book of sweaters and if i can find a book of sweaters on thriftbooks.com i'll put the link below for those thinner um people that follow me but if not i'm gonna put this up there anyway but if i can't find it i'm sorry and i'll let you know in the description box but i'm pretty sure thrift books would have it um so that's all i wanted to say about my project and about nitpicks customer service, the best customer service ever. It's six o'clock and election was on Tuesday. So this is election week when I'm filming this. Slept like a baby because I don't vote. I haven't voted since the nineties. I don't care who's in office because until the government is literally dismantled from why it was originally built, the reasons why the government was built. If that's totally dismantled and rebuilt, I'll vote. But for right now, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. But anyway, my opinions are my own. If you voted, great. If you voted for Trump, great. If you voted for Biden, great. If you voted independent, great. I don't judge. I'm happy if you're happy. Um, like this one person I saw on YouTube said, if it floats your boat, it sails mine, but I don't vote. However, I'm on social media. I'm on Twitter. And so I just been seeing what's going on. So I went to bed last night listening to 
MSNBC and I fell asleep. And I literally fell asleep like 8.30. So I woke up three o'clock just as, um, who, Georgia went blue. I'm in Atlanta, I should know this, I'm sorry. But that's why I'm being weird this morning because I've been up since three because I went to bed too early. And hey, I'm middle age. But that being said, so that's my work in progress and that's my nitpick story. And the reason I don't have a yarn haul to show you is because I ordered six skeins of the cranberry mohair. However, it hasn't gotten here yet and it wouldn't get here because I just ordered it Monday and it's just Friday. So I'll probably get it next week sometime and when I get it, I'll do a video and an initial review. It should be the same as the Mirth Mohair. However, I'll still come on, show you the color, tell you the weight, and all that other good stuff. And um, we'll go from there. I wrote notes this time because my last video, the Middle Ager video, I feel like I'm all over the place. So I took notes. You know, the older you get, the notes you have to take. And so I wrote a note. Talk about the Nick Picks Mohair yarn. I did that review their customer service. I did that. Review the yarn. I did that. Talk about knitting a sweater. Haven't done that. <laughs> See, notes work. Notes work, people. So, let me tell you why I got so excited about knitting this sweater. Initially, I was excited because I had heard mohair merino wool are the best. So I was just like, oh, if I can get that, I'm like superstar status. Ooh, merino wool. Ooh, mohair. I'm not a fan of wool. And maybe merino wool feels different than regular wool. But wool gets in your eyes and, you know, you have to... And I have natural hair and it hurts my hair. It pulls my hair out. You know, I just, I'm not into it. But I don't know. Merino wool may be different. I'll probably purchase some merino wool after I make this sweater or in the process of making the cranberry one, I might buy merino wool just to make something to see how it feels. But I got excited. And so once I got excited, I was like, well, let me see what all the rave is about with the mohair yarn. So I went to Etsy and um, if you're on Etsy, I'm sorry, you guys, it's early in the morning. I'm all over the place. Anyway, we're gonna talk about Etsy, but look at my hair, I shaved, I shaved my sides. I was going to the barber, paying 25 bucks, just for him to shave the size, $25 every time I went to the barber. So I said, let me buy some clippers and do it myself. And I think I do it better than the barber. But anyway, <laughs> my, my subscribers know me. This is who I am. I'm not gonna apologize for being authentically me. So back on Etsy and the mohair. <laughs> On Etsy, uh, the mohair sweaters, I looked up mohair sweaters because I was like, oh, this is great fabric. You know, this is great yarn. I can make this sweater and wear it. Oh, it'll be wearable. I could probably make two. So I said, well, let me see what the going rate is for mohair because should I continue to spend $8.99 a scheme if I don't need to, I can just buy it. Went on Etsy and mohair. And I was looking at regular size models. These weren't even plus size models. Mohair sweaters from the most basic on up to the most intricate, $100 to $130 a sweater. So, I have the knitting skills to knit a sweater. I have the income to buy my own yarn. Why would I pay $130 for a sweater? So, I said all that to say if, if a scheme cost, and that's the thing, uh, nitpick side note, the yarn was $11.99 a scheme. Um, the only one that was $8.99 a scheme was the Mirth, and that's why I purchased it. However, when I went back to their website and saw that all the mohair was on sale, well, it wasn't on sale, they dropped the price, I bought the Cranberry. And I think I'm going to get Periwinkle too, and they got silver pewter, they've got everything. Oatmeal, um, I think they have oatmeal, but you have to ask about availability. But all the yarn, all the mohair yarn is now $8.99 a scheme. So, that's it. I'm a knitter. I can afford the yarn. I have the time. I can make it myself. 
So being a knitter and knitting this sweater has taught me that I can make a lot of beautiful things that I would go to the store and pay money for when I could just make it myself. So if you're a knitter and you're kind of discouraged about knitting something, and to me, I'm just starting the sweater, but it seems like this sweater is the easiest thing to knit outside of a scarf. A hat for a new person, even if you're just picking a hat, if you're knitting it in the round, maybe difficult. If you're knitting on regular needles and stitching it beside, maybe easy. But a sweater is one of the easiest things you can make depending on how intricate it is. And that is a beginning sweater. So it's not that intricate. I can make mohair sweaters and save 50 to $70. And if my camera's moving, that's because my cat's fiddling around on the stand. But you can make a lot of your tops for the winter for yourself, by yourself, at half the price, almost half the price. So I would suggest to anyone who is knitting, and you guys know me, I'm nervous. I'm nervous about everything. I'm nervous about, nervous about gussets. I'm nervous about everything. So if I'm comfortable with knitting with mohair and I'm comfortable with knitting this sweater, I think you guys should give it a try. And it's not just the mohair sweater you can knit for yourself. I mean, this sweater, let me show you this sweater. This sweater is really nice. <clears throat> and it is um, alpaca. But I'm pretty sure you could do this with wool. Well, you could probably find some inexpensive alpaca. But this is the sweater. I want to knit for myself and I think it's an amazing sweater so and it's a skill level is beginner so if you are interested in making your own sweaters and if you're a knitter I would say try it because it's one of the easiest things that I've attempted since knitting scarves um, just make sure that you get the same type of yarn because I don't know how this stuff would work if I didn't use mohair or if I don't use alpaca because I am a new knitter. Now the more experience you get and the more you learn about different yarns and what's similar to alpaca so on and so forth then you can you can use whatever you want. But that sweater in a store will probably run you about 50 60 bucks. And the wool is merino wool. So why not just make it yourself and spend half the price, you know? So that's what I discovered when I started looking through this book and I started shopping for wool. I'm mean, not wool, when I started shopping for yarn to make um, sweaters, I realized that um, a lot of the tops I can make myself and spend half the price. Like, and this is on Etsy, they're running like 100, 130. Imagine if you went to like a regular store like Saks or something, you probably paying $200 for a mohair sweater you could have made for 50 in a weekend. So, I don't know, that's, that's just what I think about the whole knitting and being nervous, like, you know, and knitting on mohair, not that bad, just practice it. I feel like I'm all over the place. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and lastly, I wanted to talk about what am I now? Like I started this channel because I'm a new knitter and I wanted to learn things. But I feel like since August, I've gathered a wealth of information from reading books, from talking things out, from watching YouTube, from being on my Facebook page. I feel like I am, excuse me. I don't feel like a new knitter, even though I can still consider myself a new knitter. Does that make sense? Because of the knowledge I've gained, not necessarily the skill set. And I think my skill set's pretty good. I still make mistakes. Like when I, we didn't even, you know what, we're going to get into it. I made my second mitt for my thing. I stitched the loose thread for the gusset and I continued to stitch. I didn't make the hole for the gusset even though I stitched the new thread in because I doubled it with the thread that I was using. 
Does that make sense? Like the, the, the continuing thread and the new thread to make the gusset, I used them both instead of just using the new knit. So I have a wrist warmer and I have a fingerless knit. So one is a fingerless knit and one is a wrist warmer. So I'm still a new knitter. I still make mistakes. But in my mind, because of all the knowledge I've gained, even though I haven't practiced the stitching, the instra, you know, like the Icelandic looking stitching, I haven't done that yet. I know the process. I know the process of a cable knit. So in my head, I feel like I'm more advanced than I am with my hands. Does that make sense? So do I consider myself a new knitter or am I a seasoned knitter? Do I even need to put myself in a category? So those are some of the things I'm thinking about. And I know I told you guys to watch Barbara Knits. Her name is Watch Barbara Knit. That's her YouTube channel, I think. And she spells out beginning, intermediate, and advanced. However, my knowledge is more advanced, but my skill set is more beginner slash intermediate. Does that make sense? So what do I consider myself? Do I consider myself still a new knitter because I haven't pushed out the projects of an advanced knitter or do I consider myself an advanced knitter? Tell me what you think. Was this all over the place? I didn't mean for it to be. I really, this is my second time shooting this. I was 18 minutes in the first video before I stopped and re-recorded. So I hope this wasn't all over the place, but anyway, you'll tell me in the comment section below, trust me. I like to shout out Resilient Stitch. I love you to pieces. Follow her on Instagram. And also Janine, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, J-E-H-E-E-N, Hardy. Thank you guys so much. You guys are so supportive on my Instagram with my projects, with my questions, with my apprehension about things. I want to thank you too so much. And hopefully, I'm not even going to aim for 100. Well, we're going to aim for 100. Let me get 100 subscribers. Let me get 100 subscribers, but I'm going to start doing giveaways, but I'm thinking about just, I'm sending Janine something already, but I'm thinking about sending Resilient Stitch something. I wish I could send her that yarn that she asked me to review, and who was it? Joanne's? They canceled my order. <laughs> How dare you? But um, I'm going to find something to send Resilient Stitch because she's so supportive. I love her. She's so cute too. And Janine, love you to death for all your recommendations. I want to thank you guys for supporting me in my new knitter's journey, for dealing with my wacky, crazy middle ageness, and um, for watching. So thank you guys for that. To all my new subscribers and my subscribers that just watch and don't necessarily comment, thank you. And I would love some words via your fingers if you would like to drop a hey or hi in there um and i just hope this video made sense it's really a review of the nitpicks and the sweaters and all of that stuff i'm not gonna go over it again i'm not gonna i'm not gonna hurt you i'm not gonna mentally drain you but yeah i'm middle age i'll drop <laughs> if you can't laugh at yourself then hey so I'm gonna drop the link for the plus size knitting book below. I'm gonna drop the link for the mohair via knit picks below. And I'm going to find a pattern for uh, a book, hopefully for a size, I'm hoping it'll be for size zero to size 10 for the knitters who want to knit sweaters but are unsure um, of getting this book. Cause this is a $15 book. And if you're not a size 10 or higher, and you're gonna and you're a new knitter, you shouldn't get this book and attempt to adjust it because you're gonna be pissed, especially using merino wool and mohair because it's on the higher end of yarn. So I'll try to find one and put the link below. Thank you guys for watching. As I always say, I hope this wasn't all over the place. I hope it wasn't. But if it was, comment below. I probably agree with you, just don't curse me out. And I'll try to do better. I'm going to try. That's all I can give you. But um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I hope you don't stress out about the election because you shouldn't stress or worry about anything that's beyond your control. The only thing we all can do is be the best us we can be. And if you are being the best you that you can be, 
then you're going to be okay. So until next time.